why are so many people Googling prayer? Uh, technology doesn't seem to be enough these days in these difficult times. We need something more. We need to connect to a deeper reality. So why are so many people going to the internet Googling prayer? Prayer is not a delusion. Prayer is real and connects us to God. Welcome to the kitchen table, and uh, we're going to be talking about prayer. Uh, I'm in the middle of having my breakfast. Hi, Steve. Uh, enjoy that. But I saw an absolutely fascinating video with Russell Brand. This will blow your mind. It blew mine. So let's watch this. Hey, how are you coping? Are you all right? Guess what I found out? That everyone's Googling prayer. People want to know how to pray all of a sudden. There was a time not that long ago when we thought that prayer religion was redundant, that mankind would answer all of our questions through technology. What is it that we're looking at now, right now, staring at a magical tablet that's difficult to conceive of how that damn thing functions? Do you really think anything's moving when you swipe up like that? Do you really think that it's anything other than evidence that someone understood the way that addiction operates and that swiping up is unstoppable? I barely go on those things anymore the thing that we're on literally now because I can't stand it. I can't stand getting weighed to it and wedded to it. We are looking for a sacred experience. What do you mean sacred, Russell? It, in the dictionary, it tells you that sacred means holy, divine, the presence of God. What I think that means is the presence of the limitless that is always, by its nature, present in the limited bandwidth of our physical sense-based experience here on Earth, which on some level we know is not enough, and now we've been forced into a monastic corner, except for those of us that are frontline workers, except for those of us that are up there shirkers, and except for those of us that are poor mag jerkers, we're all stationed aren't we and alone now i've got young kids so i'm pretty busy and occupied with the, dealing with the madness and the continual violence plus i've got bear oh no bear oh no bear but what we all need is a connection to the sacred and the fact that people are googling prayer suggests to me that we need to find a way to pray together now you might not want to pray because <laughs> excuse me mate you've had difficult experience of religion or you say hey man i don't like religion it's trying to tell me how to think it ain't trying to tell you how to think it's just giving you some suggestions how to think and you think nationalism's not trying to tell you how to think you think capitalism's not trying to tell you how to think you think rationalism materialism aren't telling you how to think you think you're not trapped in some sort of cyber pinball neurological machine information synaptically rattling around just to keep you trapped trapped within the sounds of commercials bombarding your ears for years and years continually well let me tell you if you think that you're free the only way that you're free is your freedom to see that there's something that be beyond what you can normally see and the only way we can access this is through prayer interesting video dave super interesting i'll start off with the, what he says at the start what is a sacred experience what sets that apart from any other experience well as a good christian I might want to say that all experiences are sacred because I would say that everything comes from God and so on. But I think that what Brand is talking about, he's saying there's something beyond the merely material. And he's right. He's absolutely right in that. But uh, my fear is that he looks, if you like, for the sacred without God. He looks for the holy without the holy one. Um, yeah, if you, yeah. His view of God doesn't seem to be big, and his view of other people in prayer doesn't seem to be big. Uh, Russell Brand seems to talk about prayer as an internal, uh, individual thing, but a prayer seems different uh, in the Bible. How do, how do we find a way to pray together, which prayer seems more communal? Well, he, he does talk about it as an individual thing, but he also talks about it as praying together. And I think his, the thing that he misses out is who we pray to. He sees prayer in and of itself as a virtue. And I do think there is a kind of Hindu Eastern mysticism about it that you know we connect to the one that i am one and you are one and the earth is one and uh, we all connect to this greater one um i don't know it, it it's missing out the one whom we pray to i think that for russell brand that's not the important thing it's the act of prayer whereas for us prayer is useless unless it is to the god who answers prayer no, I think that's true. And I, but what I love about this video is that Russell Brand's smart enough to say it's not just religion that's telling you how to think. 
uh, he says, oh, people are saying, I think for myself. He says, everything you look at in the world, everything you mm -hmm. take in is teaching you how to think. So at least admit that, have a little bit of humility. So that's a good thing that it's coming in that video. Yeah, I mean, I was, uh, um, I mean, I'm a Presbyterian, so I don't do a lot of amens and hallelujahs, but I was amen and hallelujah at, the, at Russell Brand doing that because it was, it was just spectacular. It's right. People go, oh, I don't want any religion because religion's telling me what to think. And I'm going, duh. What do you think? That your TV's telling you what to think. Your politicians are telling you what to think. Your mom's telling you what to think. Your mates are telling you what to think. You have to think for yourself. And Christianity doesn't say, hey, right, this is what you've got to think. It says, let your mind be renewed. Hmm. You know, it doesn't, I, the way I often argue is the Christian view of education, for example, is that we don't tell people what to think. We teach people how to think. Yeah. And look, he talks about the different types of reality, like uh, everything we see is the only reality there, there is, the material worldview. But he seems to say there's a different type of reality and he just doesn't quite get there, but he, he is hinting at it. Yeah, he's, you know, sometimes he's so close and yet so far. The fact is, the material is not the only reality and that anyone watching this, you've got to grasp that. And it's not some kind of vague otherworldly stuff. There is a material, there's a material, there's a spiritual aspect to life as well. And unless you grasp that, you are missing out on what the world really is. And you're missing out on, on who you really are. It's like a friend of mine told me who became a Christian. Before I was a Christian, I saw everything in two-tone black and white. Now I see it in multidimensional rainbow colors. Yeah, look, I think I like that about Russell Brand, that he's moving in sort of that direction. But the big question for him is really, how can I be liberated and free? Because he's lived a life of he's had everything he wants, but it's not enough. And prayer seems to be pulling him in a direction. Would you say that? Yeah, I think, I think he's falling into this trap of saying, okay, the, the material world is not enough. I need to look inside myself. The problem is he needs to be free of himself as well. And how do you be free? Well, there was one person who said, I'm going to ask you who it was, Steve. Uh, know the truth and the truth will set you free. Go on, give the yeah. Sunday school answer. Yeah, the Sunday school answer is always Jesus. But then Jesus comes to the issue of prayer as well. If Jesus is that smart to say those things, when his disciples say, teach us to pray, he says, he doesn't say go into yourself. He, he, he puts them towards God, towards their heavenly father. So that, that's a good thing. Yeah, it is. And, and in the Lord's Prayer, it's very interesting. It's not all about me, is it? You see, right. I think for Russell Brand, a lot of it's about me. It's, it's our Father in heaven, not my Father. You know, give us our daily bread, not just give me. Uh, I think that that is an absolutely crucial aspect to it. But Steve, this, was, this is an unbelievable video. It's a wonderful video. Brand asks a lot of questions. I think he heads off into some answers that are not right, but I think he heads off into others that are. Um, for me, if we can find a video like this every week, I'd be really happy. I want to ask people who are watching this to watch that video again, to think about it. If you've got any questions, get in touch with us. Just ask those questions and get the answers. Uh, Steve, I'm going to say goodbye, but when we come to the kitchen table, I'm going to finish my lunch. Uh, what, are we, what are we going to have for breakfast next week? Oh, for, well, some food for thought. Next week, we're going to look at another influential non-Christian who explains why the death and resurrection of Jesus is actually the central event of the whole universe. Now, that's Tom Holland, not the Spider-Man Tom Holland, but the Tom Holland who uh, wrote the book Dominion about Christianity and its influence in the world. Join us at the kitchen table then, because I think that's going to be great food for thought. <music>